Hi everybody, Chris Petrie here. Thanks for stopping by. We're having a fun time. I'm glad you could make it here. We're actually going to just talk about an interesting subject today, working in the larger formats with a larger palette. So we're just going to cover this larger palette here. It's made by um, John Pike. And um, just wanted to quick say, if you haven't been here before, please consider subscribing. Um, and if you hit the notification bell, you'll also know when our Watercolor in 5 videos are coming out. And as well, we have Chris Petri. Uh, yeah, four years I've been on YouTube now. And if you go to Chris Petri, you type that into YouTube, you'll see I have another YouTube channel. And that's a lot of fun. We have tons of videos there. I have over 250 videos. And those are large uh, format videos with um, maybe approximately an hour videos hour-long videos each and we cover the whole gamut soup to nuts the whole enchilada of doing a watercolor painting from start to finish on most of those videos so you'll see that that format on Chris Petri on YouTube is a little different than this this we're just going to take out take five minutes and uh, five or ten minutes 15 minutes you know a shorter amount of time and just uh cover some interesting information so let's get right into it here this is exciting for me to do this video and let's talk about the John Pike palette great palette one of my favorite artists uh, Mel Staben uses this palette he paints in large format uh, most times I've seen him paint um, in person I've been to his workshops and he always tends to use full sheets of uh, watercolor paper and works in a large format all the time. And this is kind of a palette you want to use when you're going to work in a larger format. You see me work a lot of my videos. I'm using smaller palettes, paint boxes, um, and I'm using, I'm a lot of times doing smaller compositions. But um, this is just a cover. If you want to go larger and start working in larger formats, which I suggest everyone does and tries it out, you know, at least once in a while, try a large, larger painting than you normally do. And you'll, you'll really, It'll be challenging, it'll be fun, it'll be frustrating, maddening, exciting all at the same time. <laughs> all right, so here we go. Larger style format, palette, and there's also with this palette, you have an extra additional, the cover also uh, is a second palette uh, pan if you need it. So you can flip this over and also use this, put some colors on here for larger washes. And this is the main palette. And, uh, you know, with larger palettes, you know, you're using larger brushes, larger paintings, larger palette, larger brushes, more water. These are some larger style brushes that I would say are kind of common to people that work in larger format formats with their watercolors. So, you know, you have your uh, hake brush, you have uh, your um, large square brush or flat brush. You have your large mop brushes, which are great. And then, you know, another interesting uh, flat brush here, which is um, a little more narrow than this one here. And you, this one qualifies for a flat brush, maybe. You can get some interesting effects with this. We'll show you in just a second, second what we can do with a hake brush. Very fun things you can do with a hake brush. It's a great, if you'd like to do landscapes and um, outdoor type things, this is really phenomenal. This is a great brush all around, um, especially for a large format. Um, okay, so let's, maybe we'll, first we'll cover some colors here and um, we'll just do a quick demonstration here. Now, these are a few different colors that I don't normally use on a daily basis, so what we'll do is maybe we'll just go around here, maybe some of these are my standard in my standard palette that you'll notice I have them on all my palette videos. So I have palette videos on both my YouTube channels. So this is going to be your lemon yellow. We could even put this in here. And that's going to be your cadmium yellow. So a warm and a cool um, yellow. And that's going to be your yellow ochre maybe. And these, these colors are, have been in the palette for maybe a year and I haven't, I just, I just spritzed them with a spritz bottle to reactivate them. So ideally you want to do some fresh, uh, you know, fresh paint in here, squeeze out fresh, fresh paint when you work. And this is quinacridone yellow 
for quinacridone gold. And then we have cadmium orange, cadmium red. And what do we have here? This should be, that's probably, um, this looks like um, rose matter. That's alizarin crimson. This would be burnt sienna. Burnt umber. Burnt sienna is a little more red. And viridian green, no, viridian, which is green. This looks like sap green. This might be um, olive green, sap green. That might be an, another version of Viridian green. Cool, very cool green. Then we have our cerulean blue, cobalt blue. And this is good, to, good to memorize your colors. You just go around your palette and just try to call out the colors, try to memorize them. French ultramarine blue, beautiful blue. This is, that looks like royal blue maybe. And we're getting a little bit, uh, when that happens, no big deal. We just, that actually might be, let me see this. Okay, that looks like Payne's gray. And this one looks like Prussian blue, beautiful blue. And then ultramarine blue. So you can kind of see we have a lot of great colors on here. You can access them quickly and get a lot of paint and water, you know, out onto your paintings. So this is an ideal um, palette to use when you're working in a larger format. You, you saw how I use this large square brush, plenty of water, and I went through my whole palette here. And we got a lot of paint on this uh, paper here, so we're just using a scrap piece of watercolor paper. It's a very inexpensive um, watercolor paper here. And you can even sometimes do this when you're watercolor painting. You can lift up your paper and move it around and mix your colors around like that if you want to. If you want to keep your paper so that you can, if you have your paper taped down to a board, like a foam board or a masonite board, you can lift it up or if you even have just a block of paper or a pad of paper while you're working, you can lift up sometimes and, you know, let your washes mix and mingle and watercolor is really great that way. It really, you can get some awesome effects with just moving your paper around even when you're doing washes. But you can see I used plenty of water, plenty of paint, and these are plenty moist here. So you can see I sprayed this paint down with some really nice clean fresh water in a spritzer bottle all the way around and again you're gonna have the freedom if you do larger works larger paintings you use this type of palette you won't feel like you're kind of looking for more space to to, to work you have it there so what I'll do now is we'll just do a quick uh, We'll just wipe up the palette a little bit. And I'm using both sides of my paper. So this was another demo I did. I flip over my paper and I have more paper. Okay, we did that square brush. Let's use our mop brush now. So let's take some French ultramarine blue. French ultramarine blue. Prussian blue. Payne's gray. A little bit of burnt umber. There we go. Let's do a sky. Now when you do your sky, you can say that looks 
too much gray, maybe stormy clouds, that's okay. We'll take some more French ultramarine blue, cobalt blue, cerulean blue, and we'll just add that in. And then just straight water. Then we can go back in again, get some cloudy feel there. And you can move your paper around a little bit if you're doing a sky like this, a sky wash. And maybe some water over here. So when you work in a large format, you can cover a lot of ground with a beautiful brush like this. This is an Alvaro Castanet brush, mop brush. You can do a sky and an ocean, or a lake, or some water, all in one wash. Large palette, plenty of space to mix up your colors. And that's pretty much a real fun way to create some fantastic practice exercises for yourself. And once you get real familiar with these type of exercises, practice exercises, then you just, then you go in and do your painting. You go in and do a finished painting after you've practiced this a number of times. And then you'll see how you can use all the colors in your larger palette to create a larger painting. And you've practiced it a few times so that you kind of get the feel for that. And you, again, you can, if you keep your paper so that you can lift it up, you can take your washes and let your washes mix and mingle around on your paper. And uh, you'll have a fun time. All right, so that's just some of the things we can do. And of course, we have other brushes. Just so we can see here, let's... We have a nice square brush here. You can do some great uh, architecture with some square brushes. And then your uh, hockey brush, or hake brush. You can wet your brush a little bit. And then you can just take some, some, maybe some greens. Browns, greens. Don't worry about mixing your colors up like that. And get some great uh, weeds and, and grass and things. This is a great brush for, again, landscaping and things like that. We'll go in and get some more. And we're just having some fun here on the palette. You get much better effects on the paper, of course. And I have just another scrap paper here. We'll take some more. Mix our colors. So you can see we get some great, interesting uh, effects with that. All right, everybody, have a great time with your watercolors. Try out some larger format painting. You can get some larger brushes when you can afford uh, in your budget, whatever you can, whatever your budget allows, you, you, you get some larger brushes. 
and um, when you can. And then uh, you start working that into your practice uh, regiment. And then you'll be able to um, have fun with that. And then when you get to a larger painting and you, you're going for it, you'll already be familiar with it because you practice it here on your palette, your larger format palette. You've tried it on some of your scrap paper. So you save your scrap paper to practice on. And we'll see you on the next video, everyone. Thanks so much for coming by again. Uh, please hit the like button if you like this video. And also, uh, please, uh, please subscribe. Okay, we'll see you on the next video. Bye-bye.